everybody. I'm Casper, and I'm from the University of Bristol. Uh, I'll introduce you to explainability fact sheets, which are a framework for reasoning about explainability approaches. Uh, when designing the, the, explainability, the explainability fact sheets, we took a role-driven approach, so we tried to consider a wide variety of audience. And in this case, we had a look at creators of explainability approaches, which are researchers, about their users, which are either engineers who deploy these systems, or data scientists who just play around with them to understand their data and their models, and also about evaluators who are policymakers or auditors of these black box machine learning models and their explainability techniques. And you can see a wide variety of use cases that apply to different stakeholders. And these are usually either functionality checklists or deployment checklists, uh, design guidelines for these methods, or a way to evaluate and inspect them. Oops. Right, oh, that's great. So, <laughs> right. Uh, so we designed our explainability fact sheets around five pillars. These are functional, operational, usability, safety, and validation. And I'll go through some of them with real life examples throughout this talk, but there's a whole list in the paper, so please check them out. And as you can imagine, the things that are published in papers are not usually the things that end up being implemented. So, <laughs> you probably should have two frame, two, two fact sheets. One for the, there you go. Uh, one for your algorithmic design and the method that you introduce and, and another one for your implementation. And possibly you also need different fact sheets for different implementations depending on how we approach the topic. So let's, I'll walk you through some of these desiderata along the five dimensions, and I'll take three different roles, as a researcher, then uh, as a person who wants to deploy one of them, and finally as an auditor. So let's put our researcher hats on, and let's talk about an algorithm, an explainability algorithm that I designed. And I call it explain, and it works for predictive models which output numbers, which is a regression. I have a model that predicts a particular number, say, of members in the audience, and then I want to explain it with my algorithm. So, you know, it works for regression, it was designed for regression, but if you think about it, probabilities are also numbers. So what if you apply it to a probabilistic classifier? Would it have the same properties? Would it still work? Would the explanations that you get be sensible? And the same sort of applies for your feature space. So say that it only supports numerical features, like your age, your height, et cetera. But then I have a data set which, is, which has some categorical features, like, for example, a color of an object. So because I'm a computer scientist, I can hack this problem and I can encode this categorical feature as an indicator. Is it red? Is it not red? Is it blue? Is it not blue, et cetera? And then it becomes a numerical problem. Would my explainer still work in that case or not? Yay. Uh, so let's have a look at another case. So say that I, I designed a really good explainer, and this model agnostic, it, it can be used with any sort of black box predictive model that you may have, and it is also post hoc, which means you can retrofit it into any sort of system that you have. Now, because I got it published, it also probably has some nice properties, which I can guarantee. And now the, the, the question is, if it works with any black box model, are these properties that I advertise uh, coherent with, with, with applications of the same? So if I deploy it for a black box X, would it have these properties? What about black box Y? Maybe it just works for a particular subset or a particular condition has to be met in order for it to work. And the same applies to uh, its implementation. So for example, if like I said at the very beginning, the implementation might not necessarily be accurate with respect to the theoretical foundation of the algorithm because of some difficulties or NP completeness of the problem. 
So now let's have a look at engineer's perspective. So say that I have a music, recommend, a music streaming service and I recommend songs to people. And I want to explain these recommendations. So this is my setting. And then I want to make sure that the explanations are in terms of users' listening habits and their interactions with the system. Since in this case, the deployment would be uh, in, real in, in, in real time, I need to make sure that my algorithm can handle that and that it doesn't introduce any sort of delays. And this is one of the things that you need to make sure. Uh, then also you need to consider your audience. So for example, in this case, this will be people who listen to music. You do not want to explain to them in terms of some machine learning background knowledge or optimization and whatnot. You want to use general music concepts that they can relate to and that they can then apply and modify their behavior if they want to change the recommendations. And this applies, for example, to the explanation medium, which in this case would be text snippets. We recommend you this song because the parsimony, you don't want to write an essay for them saying what they have, what, why this song was chosen. You just want to give them one quick, one quick explanation. And also it's one directional. You need to make sure that it's enough to communicate it to them and not, that they know you are not expecting any sort of feedback. Finally, the auditors. And in this case, you want to make sure that your explainability system is coherent with your predictive model, that it's, it doesn't introduce any contradictory explanations, and also that it provides the explanations in a context. For example, if, a, if you get an explanation, you want to inform the user that it only applies to, say, residents of the United Kingdom, as opposed to generalizing it to the entire world. And also, you need to make sure that the explanation is invariant, by which I mean, if you ask for an explanation of the same point twice, you should get the same explanation. And if this is not the case, you need to know why this is happening and how to prevent that. Uh, and then the, the funny bit is, if you explain an automated decision to somebody, you leak some information. This is especially visible in case of counterfactual explanations. Had you been older than 30, your loan would be accepted, say. Then you're, you're giving some information to people, and if you can collect enough of that information, you may be able to game the model or steal it, especially if it's a trade secret. And finally, validation. How have you validated your explainability approach? And whether the way in which you validated it corresponds to the way in which you're deploying it. So there is a long list of these desiderata in the paper, and by no means we claim that it is either exhaustive or prescriptive. Some of the desiderata are incompatible with each other or competing, and many cannot be answered uniquely. So at the end of the day, it's all about the choices that you make and how you justify them in which case the explainability fact sheets are there to help you. Thank you.